As part of our centenary celebrations, we've been interviewing ex-students of the college. It is my great pleasure to interview and to introduce ex-student and my grandfather, Mark Nifland. When did you first uh, attend Morris College, Cogra? Uh, 1937, and Brother Aidan was the head teacher at that time, the headmaster, rather, and uh, we were interviewed in the old monastery, and uh, uh, I was taken with all the photos of the, the school footballers and cricketers, uh, and athletes that was there, uh, and uh, at that particular time we got half a day's holiday because in that year the 500th student had joined uh, the school. They were a pleasant time that I had all the time I was at school. Do you remember your first day? All the first yes, few days? Yes, uh, we went into, we started in fourth class in those days and uh, uh, Brother Paul was the teacher and there was 90, I think, in the class. All the time I was there, I only had two lay teachers. Uh, in fifth class, we had a Mr. McCain and another one in sixth class was Mr. Wade. Now, Mr. Wade, he had a million stories to tell. And uh, I always remember, um, <laughs> Mr. Wade used to roll cigarettes yeah. while he was teaching us. While know? he was teaching? Yeah. <laughs> that, that he had that behind his, uh, behind <laughs> his uh, desk. Mm. Yeah. Teachers, do you have a favourite teacher or, or a teacher that you think inspired you at Cochra? Oh, it'd be, that, that would have been uh, Brother Bede, I would say. Mm. He had two stints at Cochra, and so did Brother Aiden. But I can remember that Brother Evangelist was another one, and Brother Aubrey. They were, you know, I find it a bit hard to remember other ones. But uh, they, uh, and I remember a friend of Brother Evangelist, he was Brother John, and he was spent a few weeks, or two weeks or so, at Cogra, and he was on his way to the Solomons. Mm -hmm. And it was later on in the war, that had the Japanese killed him. So a memorable incident that you remember? Oh, no. <laughs> there was a, we had a brother, Crispin, and uh, he taught us in the old, what was the old bike shed. And that uh, was the first class room that was there. And he, he wanted half a bucket of water for an experiment he was doing in front of the class. Mm. And uh, he said, Go and get me half a bucket of water, Martin. And I went over, I got trying to please. I yeah. brought a bucket of water home back to the classroom, which was three quarters full. Mm. <laughs> and he, he said, I said, half a bucket of water. And I looked at him, I thought, well, you've got better than a half a bucket. <laughs> but he threw the other half at me, and at that time I was a bit active. <laughs> And I could see the water coming, and I ducked down, you know, yeah. and went straight over my head out onto the plate. And there was Brother Gildas. He was a great bloke, Brother Gildas. And he used to train us in the football. And we used to go down to the park there near the Stormwater Channel. And it had just been filled in by the council. It was a tip, you know, mm. and there was pieces of tin sticking out and all that. And us forwards had run down and come back and and then he'd take the backs down and run them back. And then when the second time you did it, <laughs> we'd run out of puffs, see, and he would pull the cane out of the leg of his pants and he'd flick you on the backside as you ran off and he would, didn't you go forward, you know? <laughs> Yeah, it was like a jockey with a, mm. with a battery on a horse, you know. How about the, the students you went to school with, any particular characters from your year that you look back on fondly? One of them was... Uh, Rossy Flynn, and he was great with horses, and uh, they had the milk run up the top of our street in Mimosa Street, and another one was Johnny Saunders, that's uh, the older brother of Warren, mm -hmm. and I can remember at there when Warren, when when Mrs Saunders was having June, the uh, John's sister, uh, he used to take 
young Warren to school. And now I'm talking about second class, you know. Yeah. And Johnny was a great pianist. And after we'd have the concerts, there would be a piano on the, the veranda of the, the top classes. And Johnny would play the piano. And he played all by ear. So you spoke earlier that you played football for the school? Yeah, in the B grade. I was in the B grade. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we had a very, very good seven stunt, seven stunt team. They were, they, they, I believe they, their line was never crossed in the mm -hmm. competition. I was a reserve because I weighed in. I weighed in at seven six. But I only ever got one game, but gee, they were good. But our B grade team that I played in, and uh, we played Marcellin College out at Coogee Oval, mm -hmm. and we got beaten 77 nil. Mm -hmm. And our A grade team on the same day, by the same team, was beaten 66 nil. Wow. And, uh, you know, we don't talk about that much. <laughs> yeah. And any other school activities you were involved in besides football? Oh, I Extra. used to be in the relay running mm -hmm. in the uh, metropolitan things over at North Sydney. But uh, the big athlete in those days was, was Jim Bailey, and he was the, the state's champion broad jumper. And when we was trying out for the, <laughs> the running, one of my, my uh, personal achievements was that I beat Jim in the in the running, I was in the, the pink team scooper class, you know. Mm. And we had uh, Gus Britton was the captain of that thing. And Gus was a real character. And then there was Brother Barnabas we had. Mm. And if you had a bit of a disagreement with one of the your, your classmates or other classes, uh, he would put down a... a uh, Matt, he'd settle it there and he'd be the referee. So he'd put down a map in the playground for you to... Yeah, like, to yeah they have a... Fight it out. Yeah. A because if you had a, a disagreement, mm. you used to... <laughs> you used to turn around and settle it behind the old Vic Theatre. Mm. And we never, could never quit of why it was that the next day the two com combatants were called out. Mm. So that's the, the spectators oh, and right. losing them on. Yeah. And we always you know, went, how do you know that? Like he was, he was squealed on us, you know. Yeah. But then we found out after that he used, the brothers used to stand on the top deck of the monastery mm. and before all those flats were built down there, mm. with a pair of binoculars you could look straight in the back of the thing. Any bad memories of school? No. Any bad days at school? No. No? No, no. other than the best days was Thursday in the winter time when we played football, particularly when we played manly because you used to lose school at 10 o'clock in the morning. And all the brothers, I tell you, they were great blokes, mm. you know. But I, I, you know, as I said, I only ever had two uh, lay teachers all the time. I gave... think the Maris brothers taught you that was the most important lesson? Something Respect. that you've carried with you? Respect. Respect? Yeah. I noticed in that, that, uh, magazine that you gave me about the boys that had fallen in the war. Mm. The last one on that was Ronald Derren. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I went to school with Ron. Yeah. He was a nice kid. He was killed on his 18th birthday. Yeah. So after school, um, you left school, then what did you do? I was a butcher. You were a butcher? Yeah. And but whereabouts? In Rockdale. So yeah. we apprenticeship in, in Rockdale, in Frederick Street. And uh, was married in Rockdale Church, and uh, that, that, there was a lot of uh, good boys there. I can remember the, the last of the Gilbert boys that had, Why are you uh, all up? That had uh, played at the school. You know, they were a bit older than me. Yep. Yeah. But Herb Gilbert was hooker for St George, and then he went to play for Belmain. But he was in the in the army with my uncle and uh, folks. Yeah. Well, thanks very much for sharing your stories. Good. Uh, my pleasure, love. Yeah. It's been great.